So uh, here we are in 2011, but back in 1992, uh, I built this five-string bass. And it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful piece of work. It's probably one of my best masterpieces, I would say, so far. And I thought I'd take you back in time and uh, show you the chronicles of the build of this. It's the first thing I ever documented with photographs. And uh, it's back, like I said, 1992, before the gray hairs came in. So. Check it out and enjoy the build. Let's take a closer look at what happened back in 1992. I was living in Hawaii then, and uh, I just finished doing a small job, self-employed. Made quite a few bucks on this one particular job and decided I wanted to build a base, so I took a few weeks off. And the first thing I did was draw out a design that I liked. On paper, this is before I actually had a computer or the internet, and I did everything old school. Do a drawing. I'm just gonna let you see a little of what goes on on a drawing. This is a side view of the entire neck assembly. And of course all the specs down in the bottom here. A little more detail on the peg head that I drew. And all these lines look like, you know, there they are. I just drew them, but it was about a week, the design, just doing some sketches until I liked what I saw. And then once I had a drawing, I made templates for the, uh, the two body wings. There's a side view of the, the neck up by the peg head. And then, of course, it was time to do a rendering. And I had some markers from back in my graphic arts days. And so I did a marker rendering uh, based on the wood I had to work with, which was Monkey Pod, which came from Maui. Golden Poinsettia also came from Maui, Monkey Pod. And the fingerboard was Purple Heart, and then two vertical laminations of Purple Heart. And I named it Shirley after the lady next door who had a husband who basically hollered at her all the time and she put up with a lot of verbal domestic abuse and I kind of felt bad for her and she was an artist type, got to be friends with her and kind of had a camaraderie of uh, our artistic side and I just decided to name it after her. So there's the rendering and here's the real thing. It started out with frets. 
I had frets on this, and it's a 36 inch scale base. A little close up of the monkey pod wood, which grew on the island of Maui, Hawaii. Beautiful wood, lots of chocolates and blondes. Two humbucker pickups, a shallower roller bridge, single volume control, and a simple single switch for the two bridges, one or the other, the neck or the bridge pickup. You can see some of the lines left over where the frets used to be. And I put fret marks along the side. And in uh, about 2002, I made it fretless and I covered the whole neck with uh, carbon fiber filament, three layers of it with an epoxy resin with silica mixed with the epoxy resin. It makes for a very hard and excellent surface for a fretless base. Let me turn it over now, you can see the back. You can really see the, uh, the grain structure in the golden poinsettia that's on the neck. It's beautiful. Now there's a lamination line, a break right there, and there's one right there. That's because in 98, uh, I came back to the mainland for a while and I shipped this on an airplane and I came from Hawaii to Arizona in a sudden shock of a change in climate, it caused a few cracks. And the truss rods are dual in the neck. They used to come all the way through the body and be adjustable down here on these holes. Well, after a little bit of tweakage happened in the body from the uh, shipment, by the way, this is tropical almond down the back, also grown on Maui. The only thing that didn't grow on Maui was the purple heart. Anyway, back to the story about the truss rods. I changed those around and I put an adjustment here for the truss rods. I terminated them right here. If you take this cover off, there's an adjustment in there for the truss rods. Right here is the cover for the electronics. And as you see, that's the same piece of wood the grain runs through. Before I cut this, this body wing out, I cut this out with a coping saw and then I put a little purfling of some purple heart around it. Yeah, Shirley is a pretty special bass to me. I really love playing this guitar. And I uh, played it out at numerous gigs and jammed with it with lots of people over the years. So let's go back to 1994 right now and take a look at the build process and the photos I took back then. Well, there's my workbench from 1994. You can see the uh, markers off to the side there, a few tools for drafting, and the original drawing I made. The first thing to do was cut out all the pieces from the raw stock that I had, from the templates that you saw earlier. And I did that with just a simple uh, jigsaw. Then the neck pieces all had to be cut to shape, the, the rough shape, width, length, etc., and the purple heart. And I did that at a local uh, woodworking shop where you could rent out time and use their um, giant drum sander to get those pieces that thin. Once they were all cut, they got laminated together with West Systems epoxy resin mixed with some gap filler material that helps fill the gaps, <laughs> like just like you would think. Everything that got clamped stayed that way for about 24 hours to ensure a really good cure. And then the neck pieces also were clamped together on my indoor workbench and stayed that way for 24 hours and then I had all the the rough pieces ready to go and sanded away all the resin along the edges ready for more work then the neck got its basic profile cut out on a bandsaw again at the woodworker shop where I could rent time on the bandsaw and then it was time to start shaping things and so the router came out and started routering the edges of the body wings and then some more sanding with a disc sander on the end of a, a drill. That worked pretty well for the rough radiuses and shape. Then the neck had to get the radius on the back. Uh, that took quite a bit of work. I rough shaped it first. I made a sanding block with, I think, a two and a half inch radius and spent quite a few hours by hand getting uh, all the lumps and bumps out and getting it really nice, even. Uh, radius all the way down the neck. And once that was done, I was able to clamp the 
Purple Heart fingerboard into place on the neck. Let that cure up really well. And then took it out to the outside workbench and routered away the excess material so it was flush with the edge of the neck. Once that was done, it was time to put fret slots in, which are kind of fun. You have to uh, calculate the distance between each one with a simple formula called the 1 in 18 rule. And after that, it was time for some more sanding. The radius on the fingerboard, which as I recall was an 18-inch radius, this took a lot of time because it's purple heart. Purple heart's a really hard wood, but I eventually had the radius in. Then it was time to clamp everything together. The body wings got clamped onto the main neck, and as you can see, there's a slight angle to both of them, which made it a bit tricky to get everything aligned, but once it was, it stayed that way. Again, 24 hours. Make sure everything cured up really well. And then more finished sanding by hand. Lots and lots of sanding at this point. And then I had a final piece ready for hardware installation. So holes got drilled and some routering that I didn't get pictures of for some reason. Then I installed the fret markers which are just wood dowels. That took a bit of time. Sanded all that smooth with the uh, radius sanding block. Then once all that was done I was ready to install the frets which I used a, a jig that I, uh, I bought that arbor and then just clamped them into place and then of course afterwards the frets have to be dressed. And there's the final finished guitar with some coats of oil and that's that. Well there's the photo essay of the five string bass I built back in 1994. We're back in the here and now and she still plays great. The only thing I didn't put in that photo essay was the routering for the pickups and the bridge. And the bridge had to get lowered uh, two times over the last few years uh, because I pulled the frets off in around 2002. That lowered the action a bit so I had to lower the bridge just a little bit to compensate. But she's still a real fine player and this carbon fiber I added to the neck was one of the best mods I did to it. The sustain on it is pretty intense for a uh, five string. Got really nice voicing. I really like playing this thing and I plan on keeping it a long time. If you're so inspired and you want to build one of these or an electric guitar, they're not that hard. There's plenty of kits out there and I encourage you to give it a try. It's like building a piece of furniture that has to be really precise with strings on it. So I hope you enjoyed that, and until next time, keep on hacking.